We're gonna be doing a e-brake caliper on this. It's gonna be a second caliper. This one already has the Willwood four piston brake setup that uh, I think Flying Miata does. This is the e-brake that was originally with this. Uh, the customer said that it never really worked even with any adjustment that they did. Um, it didn't really hold the car. So I'm guessing that's why they came out with this new kit that we're gonna be installing. So I'm gonna take this stuff off. Uh, it does come with everything that you should need or they have part numbers telling you what else to buy with the kit. Uh, we're going to be trimming the dust shield because it moves the caliper down and puts the new one up here. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna show you how to do it because some people don't wanna read a bunch of instructions. Was that trimmed up before or is that the way they actually come like here? Yeah, this is OE. Okay. So this is for the factory cal caliper. That's just a this is a flying Miata bracket to bolt on the four piston caliper. All I'm going to do is kind of line that up with the bolt holes that it's going to be going through and then giving us some extra space and we're going to cut this off. So we're only going to put these hand tight to put the caliper on because once the caliper's on, we're actually gonna take this back off and flip it so that the caliper is upside down and we see the back of it and you'll see why. And then these torque to 40 foot pounds. So we had it the right way the first time because it's easier to torque the caliper onto the bracket. Once that's done, take it off, flip it around like this. Um, I didn't cut enough for both bolts to go in. Not a big deal. It's just here so that we can work on the caliper from the rear and actually see what we're doing. Uh, we're going to unbolt the caliper, which are these two go uh, gold bolts. Uh, we're going to put in a spacer back here and we're going to put a uh, brake, you know, anti-seize or stop quiet on the back of the pads and the slide pins to help with chatter and to make sure that it actually releases when the parking brake releases. So the other thing too is this arm isn't the arm we want to use. So we actually have to take this arm off put on a new arm and that arm it doesn't fit right you have to file it which is probably my least favorite thing about this entire kit but once the filing is done put the new arm on and all that stuff is taken care of you can flip it back around just imagine doing all of this back here that's why we flip it So these also hold, the, they hold the brake pads and they hold the caliper. So this goes in between here because the caliper won't make up for that much distance since the brake rotor isn't that thick. So now we're going to replace this arm with the one that they provided. So it actually says to make sure that this silver part is threaded out as far as possible. Once it stops, it's not going to come out, it just, you go until it stops. There it stopped. And then I guess let's say final adjustment for the end. Alright, so on to the worst part of this. This is supposed to go on here so that it's stopped on that part, but it won't 
go all the way on because even in the instructions it says that you're supposed to file this to fit. So I'm gonna get to that. This is how far I had to uh, file it. It's not much further than it was, but it's silver now. And this actually slides on the way it should. So now it's just the reverse of this, putting this on, and obviously there's gonna be an adjustment so it doesn't have to be completely tight once this is all on. We're gonna put the spring back on. At least I find it easier for the spring to go in this side first. So now that the stuff in the back is done, we're gonna put the caliper bracket back on the way it should be. We're gonna torque these down. It's gonna be 33 for those ones. If you're wondering why they're less, it's because they're going into aluminum where the other two weren't. We're gonna put the rotor on, we're gonna put the new caliper on, and then it's the new brake line because this one is too short for the caliper being down here. And then we're going to run new, well, they're actually the OEM uh, e-brake cables. The only reason why we're running new ones is because they had different ones put in for the old Willwood setup. I'm going to take out these old e-brake mechanisms because they're just gonna sit there chattering and then we'll bolt it back up. If you have one of these calipers, taking this apart isn't that horrible. These just pull up and then out. Take the pads out. If I could. And then if you flip it over, there's little Allens that hold them in. So I'm gonna remove the Allen bolts, which is a two millimeter Allen. And it takes forever because it's in a little tiny hole. And that's really all there is to it. I'm gonna get the other one out and then we'll put the caliper back on the car. So now we're gonna put the e-brake cable on. Um, it actually goes different than what you would think. This hook part actually goes down here on the bracket part that doesn't move. And the cable tightens on this part, which does move. It's just to help with the routing. So spinning this all the way down to where, to where it stops will help you with it. And then when you slide this in that hole, you actually have to do the cable part first, which is, a little annoying, but... I actually have the other side all the way done already with the cable in it. Now we're going to lift the car up and do the cable replacement underneath the car. Now we're going to replace the e-brake cables. And if you can see, this is the one that was there. It goes up behind the charcoal canister, uh, up back there behind the uh, fuel filter, which is up in here. And then it actually comes out above the drive shaft, way up in there. I don't know if you can see that with my hand in the way. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah, so yeah, you can see more. that. And uh, the other side is a little bit more straightforward, but you've got to take off this plate and a bunch of stuff over here. So, it's not going to be fun. This is a V8 car, so we have a little bit more exhaust to worry about in a bigger drive shaft. But I'm just going to do that, and then we'll show you at the end, okay?
going to show you the last thing with these calipers, which is actually adjusting the caliper so that it works. So we're back here. I have my six millimeter on the, uh, the end of that stud, okay? This is for the lock nut. And what you gotta do is you're going to loosen the lock nut, tighten this down, and the other thing too is you want to make sure that the lock nut is loose enough that the lock nut doesn't stop. Because if it stops, you're going to think it's tight and it's not adjusted properly. So essentially I just leave this on here, keep loosening the nut as this gets tighter. And once this stops with very little force, you know, you're not cranking on this thing, you back it off one turn. And then once you do that, you check the rotor, make sure it spins, and then you tighten down the lock nut and that will give us a well-set e-brake. So, granted this diff is uh, very hard to move, but it spins now. <laughs> oh, it feels like a good e-brake. <laughs> there we go. We now have a functioning e-brake with these Willwood calipers, where before, it didn't function that much.